Hello everybody, this is Isaac here, and welcome to another Isaac Reviews. Now, I've been gone for a while now, mainly due to working on personal stuff or other projects in the, in the making. But, I'm back with another epic review. Now, obviously 2020 has been a very interesting year for Halloween. We have unfortunately haven't gone outside and doing our usual trick-or-treating stuff, but we still managed to get up in costumes and watching our favourite horror movies. And one horror movie I've certainly been interested in, this is Australia's very own answer to Jaws with... Did somebody say Jaws? No, Dav, I'm not taking a look at Jaws just yet. What? Why? But I have... I have everything I need for. I have the movie here. Don't worry, Dav. I'll cover it with you sometime in the future. It'll certainly happen, I promise. Oh, what's gonna happen? I want to review Jaws. I have this movie right here. Well, I'm sort of taking a look at a movie that... Sort of has the basis of Jaws, but kind of isn't, but instead the shark is replaced by a pig. Where are you anyways? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Well, basically, I'm in my usual reviewing room as always. Well, go along ahead, Dove. Alright, let's talk about this so-called shark pig uh, movie. Uh, what is it called? The movie that we're taking a look is Razorback. Alright, the movie is called Jaws Back. Alright, let's talk about Jaws back. Don't Jaws worry, back is about a shark. And there's these characters. I apologize, dear viewers, for that little interruption. I promise to Dove that I will certainly will review Jaws with him. But let's not get distracted and take a look at today's movie with Razorback. Set in the Australian outback, a hunter named Jake Cullen, played by Bill Keir, as he hunts down a massive razorback pig the size of a rhino. Cullen swears vengeance on the creature after the murder of his grandson, which he does get blamed for. Five years later, an American news reporter by the name of Beth Winters, played by Judy Morris of Mother and Son fame, who is doing a news report on the hunting of many of Australia's wildlife. This leads her to a massive rundown factory owned by two brothers, Benny and Dicko, played by Chris Haywood and David Angura, who are making illegal pet food. Unfortunately, Beth gets caught by the two goons, but are later stopped when the giant Razorback attacks her and kills her. Sometime later, Beth's husband Carl, played by Gregory Harrison, travels to Australia to find his soon-to-be wife, but later discovering that she was killed by the terrifying Razorback. So with the help of Jake Cullen and a young girl, Sarah, played by Arky Whiteley, they are on the mission to find the pig and kill it once and for all. So what are my thoughts on Razorback? Well, surprisingly, it's an underrated horror film from the 80s which really doesn't get talked about as much. I was on the edge of my seat when watching this film, and I was even horrified when I saw the massive Razorback coming out at the screen. I thought the story was really interesting. As the film kept on going, I wanted to see more on what was going to happen next. And with a movie that almost goes for 90 minutes, it actually goes at a really good pace. The movie was directed by fellow Australian Russell McKelly, who at the time was mostly filming music videos for Duran Duran and for his first feature film he actually does a really good job in fact he would later go on to direct the Highlander series and the surprisingly underrated shadow movie with Alec Baldwin which I might get to talk about in the future the movie was shot at Broken Hill in New South Wales and the sets are unbelievable even seeing a lot of the Australian outback which is just absolutely fantastic the characters range from good to okay Gregory Harrison, who plays Carl in the film, does a really good job. He's a man who's determined to find his wife and is very new to the Australian outback, having it being this mysterious place where a lot of dangerous things can happen. Another good character I was really interested in was Sarah, played by the stunningly beautiful Arky Whiteley. I found her really enjoyable and I really wanted to see her live in the film. And it's a massive shame that the actress who played her passed away back in 2001, because surprisingly she's a young talented actress who just left too soon. But my favourite character would certainly have to be Jake Cullen, played by the late Bill Keir. This guy is such a badass. Every time I see him on screen, I'm just cheering for him to take down that Razorback. And he's not just doing it for fun. 
He's doing it for vengeance because the Razorback killed his grandson and you would know that would have a massive effect on a person. The two comic reliefs of the film, Benny and Dicko, are not just surprisingly hilarious, but are major psychopaths. The American news reporter, Beth Winters, played by Judy Morris, is, well, I'll just say she's okay. There is a bit to her character being a wildlife reporter, but she's mostly there to be the first one killed in the movie. In fact, why don't we just talk about our main monster of the film, the Razorback. And holy crap is it scary as hell. That thing is literally the size of a rhino. And the animatronics that are used for the pig is just fantastic. In fact, this pig was actually created by Australian legend Bob McCurron, who surprisingly did effects for The Matrix and the Peter Jackson classic Brain Dead. In fact, another thing that makes this movie really good is the score. In fact, just listen to the opening theme. The school literally has 80 synthesizers and is literally horrifying to hear. And surprisingly enough, it's actually composed by none other than Ivor Davis, who is best known as the lead singer for Ice House. And for many of my audience outside of Australia who may not know who Ice House are, well, they're mostly popular for this song. So mostly Razorback, it certainly has a lot of good stuff, but are there any flaws to the film that make it suffer? I will say that the biggest downfall would have to be that this was released at the same time as Jaws' popularity was booming. Though surprisingly it doesn't bother me that much, as I really think it's enjoyable by itself and not to be compared with Jaws. In fact, the American release was actually distributed by none other than Warner Brothers of all companies. While the Australian release of Razorback managed to get $8,001 million at the box office, which I will say is sort of decent, for its American box office, well, I think it might have been a flop, only making about $150,000 in the US. Maybe that's due to major competition with other big films around 84, such as Gremlins, Temple of Doom, and of course The NeverEnding Story. Now I do know about the original novel it was based on, but I haven't read it, so there isn't going to be any comparisons to the movie and the book. Overall, Razorback is certainly one hell of a movie. My advice is to certainly watch it either during the Halloween season or heck, even nighttime, because that's when the real scares happen. But if you're not interested in these types of movies that almost copy Jaws, well, that's fine, it's just my personal opinion. For the audience score, I'll give it about a 6 out of 10. For my personal score, it gets a pretty surprising 9 out of 10. And so those are my thoughts on Razorback. Certainly an interesting horror film from the 80s and Quite frankly, I would recommend you guys to check it out. So, for my next review, well, I'll let you guess what it is. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and also click the notification button to get notified of our newest videos. Until next time, this is Isaac, signing off.